streamed in. We'd like to welcome everyone to day two of AI for All. And uh, this is one of the streams that's going on uh, with regards to the conference. So if you're interested as well to the other, to, to look at the other topics in the other stream, please feel free to do so. So I am Dr. Rogelio and I will be your moderator for the succeeding sessions. And it's now 10.30, right on the dot. Okay, so our next speaker, has been a mathematics lecturer for a good 20 years. And he has taught various mathematics and computer science courses in different universities and colleges. And he's currently connected with the Bahrain Training Institute teaching mathematics. And he completed his PhD in development research and administration in 2015. And his dissertation focused on developing models to accelerate achievement of education goals using data mining methods. So uh, today, to speak to us about finding the best model is of great interest to predict students' marks using Wicca machine learning classifiers. Wow, that's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Rito Opal. Good morning, sir, how are you? Um, kindly uh, just unmute yourself, Dr. Rito. And for me to use this uh, Zoom. Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank okay, you, Dr. Sir, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning, everybody. So today I'm very glad to present to you this uh, sample study to support our desire to adopt a uh, AI or artificial intelligence in education. Although this is just a small step, I hope we will be able to at least make use of available system that we can improve our touch, you know, our methodologies and teaching with the aim of, you know, helping students succeed in, in their studies. So let me proceed. Okay, the outline of my presentation so a short introduction of AI and education. What is machine learning and education and some softwares that we will be using. Data and procedure results, conclusion and some future work plan. All right. So AI, of course, we, this has been talked about since yesterday, artificial intelligence, okay, and education. So one of the most important contribution of AI in education is building intelligent tutors. So instead of giving all the burden to teachers on, you know, dealing with a lot of students inside the classroom, an alternative way to help teachers will be, you know, deploying intelligent tutoring system, which is able to individualize, you know, teaching, which can eventually give even uh, direct feedback to the students who are struggling at the same time, be able to give the students the appropriate you know, topics to be learned according to what they have learned at the moment. So what is good about intelligent tutoring system, there is a kind of student model that is persistently same so that anytime the student enters the system, that the, the system will be able to already assess, there is a data that represent the, the student. Another interesting uh, contribution of AI is the virtual facilitator and teaching environment. And one good example is, you know, this uh, uh, AI called Jill Watson. It is deployed in universities in the, in the US. And this is actually helping teachers to facilitate you know, in answering students' queries. This virtual facilitator has been de deployed for so many years. And after ar around four years, students actually were not able to recognize whether what was facilitating in their learning process is, you know, an AI or a human. This is a good test actually of how AI is progressing. A Turing test that, said that you know, 
that's able to accomplish this task that uh, users are not able to discriminate bef between human shooters and the machine. All right. What about machine learning? Actually, machine learning is just a subset of AI. This is a tool of AI where normally this is composed of algorithms, programs that's able to learn from the given data. Given the data, what do we do with it? Okay. So of course, some applications of machine learning, but we will be focusing in the third, which is the learning analytics. Okay, this, the, of course, this study is a small attempt to do that. The data is quite small. This is really uh, a practical uh, way where we make use of the data, the results of the test of the students. And the softwares that we are currently available, we make use of Weka. This is actually uh, machine learning environment for that is open source. Okay, meaning anybody can use this, can download this. If they are good in programming, they can even modify this. So Weka, Rapid Miner, and many more. These are open source and free. What you have to do is simply invest your time to learn them. The other one you have to, of course, purchase. These are provided by big uh, database companies like IBM, Oracle, SAS, and many more. Okay. So, so the, the, the study now, the data, we our desire actually is to be able to make use of the data and probably learn something from it so that we can help the students or assist the students in improving their performance. So of course, uh, because of these online classes or even before with face-to-face, -face, we normally have some tests online. And every test, of course, model system is able to, to save a lot of data already. So what do we do with it? Do we just keep them? We should be able to utilize this so that at least we will be able to get something out of it. And using machine learning, maybe we will be able to, to get some insights into how the students are performing. Okay. Of course, the next uh, process is data processing. So the data, the raw data from model has to be transformed, just like the time. That, that the time the student is able to finish one hour, 30 minutes, 30 seconds. So it should be converted into a one numeric format that is easily you know, processed. And of course, the third the procedure is to subject this data into several machine learning classifiers. Actually, there are a lot, a lot of uh, classifiers available with Wicca, but we simply purposively choose the ones that will produce results that are interpretable by, by, by humans. Okay, so as mentioned by previous speakers, they were using SVM and probably neural networks. We can actually make use of them. It's also available with Wicca, but the problem is the results is, are difficult to interpret. That is why we limit ourselves with the, the, the uh, classifiers that produces results that we can easily interpret. Let me describe first the data or the data description. Recently, we have this pretest or MAC test of OMA 200 and BTI. This is a basic math for the engineering students. There were 156 students who took the test. But looking at the data, there were some students, eight of them joined the test, but did not even take you know, time to, to answer anyone. They simply allow the time to finish without answering. So, I, so we remove them, eight of them. 
And looking again at the data set, there were actually maze, a missing data and any parts. So there were 235. These are the questions students missed to answer. Because in our system, once the student moves to the next section, we don't allow them to move back. So that's the problem. So some of the reasons why there is a missing uh, data is that. And looking at how, okay, this is actually a, the test. Okay, there, are, there is a 37 question test and including uh, involving learning objective one and learning objective two. And they are classified into several parts. Okay, and learning objective, we have BODMAS, students should be able to, to master it, percentage problems, ratio, and work problem. Okay, the other part, LO2, the learning objective two, students are expected to simplify expressions, three questions are there, right? And then simplifying expressions, seven questions are there, solving Solving for X, solving equations, three questions or four questions. And transposition, there were actually uh, five of them. So that is what uh, the test is all about. And of course, we included okay, the minutes, how long it took the student to finish the test. And of course, the marks. So this is a picture of what the test is all about. And from here, we will subject this to some machine learning algorithms in the hope that we will be able to get insights from the performance of the students. The, the methods that we use is supervised learning. That means we indicate you know, the class, in this case, the marks. We provide the marks and of course the attributes and hopefully the algorithm will be able to figure out what it is. So the first method that we made use is the most common method that we studied in college. If we studied statistics, that is linear regression. Don't be scared about this long list of you know, uh, variables together with the weights. But this is the result of linear regression. This is what we studied in uh, college. Okay, but there are, of course, certain assumptions when we can make use of linear regression. But let us assume that we satisfy all you know, the, the assumptions of using linear regression. And the correlation for this, of course, this is one measure of uh, the linearity or rather the linear relationship between the X and the Y. So that is quite high, point 88. Of course, actually, from going back to the data, if we re remove students around eight students who got much lesser, you know, uh, marks, this correlation would have uh, increased. The mean absolute value error. There are actually a lot of uh, error estimates, but we I simply choose one because. Uh, one is enough, just the mean absolute error. That is the difference, the absolute a difference between the correct and the approximate value divided by the total number. So the mean absolute value, mean absolute error is actually 2.4786. It will be difficult to figure out if we only look at the absolute error of linear regression but uh, we can compare it much later uh, with the other system, with, with the other learning algorithms that we are using. But looking at the, you know, the highlighted version at the right side, I hope you can recognize them. Okay, these are the important attributes. The higher the weights, the more important it is. So that if the student wants to get a good mark, at least this, highlighted, uh, he should be able to make good. 
simplifying expressions, ratio problems, including with mass. Of course, and many more down with much le lesser weights. That means, of course, this contributes to the entire score of the student, but uh, we would like to emphasize that there are some parts, okay, some variables that are really heavy weights, rather those that are, you know, getting more weights compared to the others. Okay, and thus important attributes are minutes to complete the test, simplifying expressions, ratio problems, and completing correctly VODMAS problems. So that's the first uh, method, the common method for every you know, teacher who has uh, taken statistics, they should have learned this, okay? And 24 out of 38 variables entered the model. So 14 uh, variables actually were not counted here. Okay, so that is the first method, the regression function from Weka. Okay, don't be surprised by this uh, tree looking figure, but uh, another way, another method is creating, you know, a good representation of the problem by creating trees. So looking at the random tree, actually this is an algorithm that creates trees according to certain splitting algorithm. But let us simply look at the result. Of course, if I zoom it in, there is one important node there. The first one is simplifying expression. The single best and important uh, uh, variable that has to be considered Okay, and the left side, if the student is not able to, to answer that, that is split again in the hope that actually the tree building algorithm simply desires to make a good approximations, approximation of the results by making a splitting where students are grouped in a homogeneous manner. Because in most cases, linear regression, okay, is good but many data are non-linear. So this is a solution where you split the data into smaller versions such that you are able to get a much better grouping where linear regression can be actually applied. Okay, the size of the tree is very large, difficult to read, okay? It's 301 nodes, that's very large and it is not really good. And Comparing to linear regression, its correlation is just 0.6904. Okay, and the nodes of the tree that are important are solving fractions, wood mass, transposition, and of course, the time it takes to finish the test. All right, so that's the second uh, algorithm we applied. And the RIP tree is another represent. Uh, implementation of tree building mechanism. What is good about this? Of course, the tree representation is much smaller, right? But look at the, the, the node of this uh, rep tree is, uh, is a kind of algorithm that simply prunes the tree that doesn't really make a good approximation of the, 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 the real answer, okay? Uh, so uh, rep tree is a uh, reduced error pruning tree. It's a fast decision tree learning algorithm, okay? And the size of the tree is just 11 compared to the previous, which is 301. What is good about this? Of course, the correlation is still low, it's 0.66 only or 66%. However, uh, what I appreciate about this method, this algorithm is, okay, if the student comes to you and ask for, or, okay, for the marks, estimated marks. So you just have to ask for a simple question. Did the student 
got correct loop question 20, that is LO2 solving, solving for X. If he did not get it, you can have an estimate of the mark of the student. Ignore the number two, the node number two, the estimated mark of the student is 14.4, which is less than the passing. Okay. However, if the student is able to make it, ask another question. Did the student get to finish it in less than the, the required time? Okay. If that is the case, then go to the next one. Was the student was able to answer transpose question? If not, then the estimated mark of the student is already 20.66. You only have to go through to three nodes and you will have a good estimate of the mark of the student. However, if the student was able to answer the transpose question, you ask another question to him. Did you get the question on percentage? Question 23, if not, ask another question, transpose question, is that answered? Okay, and the estimated, the node number twin, number eight, the estimated mark of the student is 21.12. If the student is able to answer that, the approximate mark of the student and node nine is 25.26, okay, and of course, if the student is able to, let's go back to the tree at the top, uh, node number six, if the student is able to answer that, okay, the estimated mark of the student is already very high, 29.37 out of 37. That is, okay, really a good mark. However, if we go up to node number three, Okay, three, and that student exceeded the, the, the time. The approximate um, mark of the student is only 4.39. So from here alone, okay, it is very interesting that we are able to identify only these questions that uh, has to be answered by student or not, and we will be able to estimate the mark of the student. Okay, that is the next, uh, that's uh, the third. Let's have the fourth. This has a strange name, M5P. Okay, and it builds a tree again. Okay, if the student is able to solve the solving for X involving fraction, if he got it, you go to the right. Otherwise, you go for a linear model just like the regression earlier, okay? If he got it, did he get the transpose question? If yes, then go to linear model four. Otherwise, the same question as before, he completed it in 88 minutes, linear model three. Otherwise, linear model two. All right. So the correlation is 0.8287. The tree structure size is four. Okay, and these are the linear models, just like the regression, but here the students are already classified according to their grouping. The group one are less performing. Okay, the group two and the group four actually are really better for performing. The third method is using the same algorithm as the first as the previous. However, it, instead of making a tree, it makes use of rules. Okay, uh, rule one, uh, rule two, rule three, and rule four. Actually, from the previous algorithm, what it does is simply making use of okay, the best bottom nodes and make it as a rule coming from the M5P. Okay, the best performing student actually goes to rule number four and the student simply means the best performing students has to simply, you know, uh, revise on percentage and ratio, simple ones. Those others are of course going to revise a lot more. Okay, and the correlation is quite high. 
Okay, and the three important uh, variables solving equations, transposition, and the minutes to complete. All right, so let me make the summary now. The performance criteria for linear regression, okay? Of course, the correlation, the higher, the better. So we say that linear regression is, seems to be the champion here. On the absolute error, again, linear regression is still the best method in making a good estimate. However, okay, if you were asked to make a choice among the models in terms of accuracy, which one is best? In terms of, you know, simplicity, if two mod Occam's razor, razor says, if two models are about the same in terms of performance, which one do you choose? Of course, we usually choose the simplest one. And of course, if another criteria is convenience, which one do you choose? Is it still the champion, the linear regression, or is something else? Okay, what if the student visits you and asks these questions? Which topic I did very well, teacher? Which topic I need to study? With whom I can work with so that I will be able to do better? So these are the kinds of questions uh, linear regression may not be able to immediately give you, but probably the other methods I have presented would be able to easily identify. Okay. Mm. Conclusion. Okay, from the graph earlier, linear regression seems to be the winner. Okay, in terms of correlation, in terms of lesser error, okay? The tree-like structure doesn't show accuracy. I converted actually the, the classes into nominal and I was able to see that the accuracy of recognizing passing or failing is around 77 to 80% for most of these uh, algorithms. Okay, the problem with linear regression is, okay, we always assume that the problem is uh, linear, but we know that not all problems are linear. And one model fits all may not be optimal or practical in some cases. And I hope you are able to get, get some appreciations on the methods that I have presented where machine learning can be used to identify okay, variables that needs attention or you know, the rep tree, for example, is a good way of estimating the student's performance. Only asking if he gets correct answers on three or more, three or four variables, you will get a good estimate of the performance of the student. Regression tree is okay, a good uh, contender also, as well as the the rule induction algorithm that gives you some kind of mm, rules that if that rule is satisfied go through the linear model okay if that is not satisfied go to the next and so on right so future work or plan use classifiers Okay, to identify students who need special needs. Or we can use classifiers also to design intervention to improve student performance. Or probably, you know, embed some kind of, because our LMS model, for example, is static. It doesn't, you know, make a good representation of how the student is performing. You give only multiple choice without really knowing what the student knows and what he doesn't know. We ask the same questions across the entire sets of students, the same questions. But we know some students are really good. Okay, the reason some stud good students are not performing because probably we are not giving them the challenge that you need. So if we embed some kind of 
representation, the students' knowledge, that would be great. And finally, and this is ambitious. We can possibly build an you know, intelligent tutoring system for mathematics to aid the students in their success of passing every mathematics courses. And special thanks to our boss and some colleagues who have been supportive and the discussion of this uh, this paper. And you can reach me at uh, this uh, email address, richu.opol at bti.moe.ph. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for having me again. I am ready for Q&A. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rito. And definitely these are, wow, things that we can consider uh, in higher education, not only higher education actually, but in education in general. Thank you so much, sir. Um, looking at the chat box and Q&A box, um, I don't believe we have any questions. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's either the perfectly understood it and appreciated it or the opposite. <laughs> I think those, I, I, I was literally <laughs> and I took away some interesting stuff. Anyway, you did provide us your email. So uh, I do believe we will be reaching out to you for, for further uh, insight and perspectives regarding this. So uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rito, for your time. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rogelio. Hearing more from having me. Thank you for listening. Thank you so ah, much. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye.